Uh, my name is Dr. Ross Kerr. I'm a clinical professor at the uh, NYU College of Dentistry and um, I work here uh, at the NYU Oral Cancer Center which we just um, opened quite recently and I'm a, a, an oral medicine specialist so one of the areas of oral medicine is the management of patients who have mucosal diseases. It's rather like being a, sort of the dermatologist to the lining of the inside of the mouth. And my particular interest is in oral cancer and oral precancerous lesions. So, oral cancer uh, is a malignancy involving um, principally the oral cavity, but it can involve other parts of the posterior aspect of the oral cavity known as the oropharynx, which is the visible part of the throat. Um, about 90% of oral cancers are a type of cancer called a squamous cell carcinoma. And that is a cancer of the lining mucosa or the skin lining the inside of the mouth. And it can occur in any site, whether it's on the tongue or inside the cheek. Um, or underneath the tongue in an area known as the floor of the mouth or in the back of the mouth in that area that I called the oropharynx. So most of the cases are these types of um, mucosal cancers or epithelial cancers. There are a small fraction of oral malignancies or oral cancers that can be from different cell types um, things like uh, lymphomas, melanomas, salivary gland malignancies, and there are a few others, but they're much rarer in comparison. So the, um, the area of interest, as I was mentioning before, is oral cancer and precancerous lesions. Those precancerous lesions tend in many cases to precede oral cancer. So you can detect a precancerous lesion before it turns into potentially an oral cancer. So the risk factors for um, oral cancer for squamous cell carcinoma, the traditional risk factors have been people who are smokers, heavy alcohol users, and people with a poor diet. And um, most of the patients who develop that with those risk factors also happen to have um, a relatively low socioeconomic um, status as well. But what we're seeing is we're seeing a paradigm shift in uh, oral cancer, particularly oropharyngeal cancers. These are cancers that are involving the tonsils, which are found um, in what are known as the palatine tonsils, which are the tonsils that were traditionally removed uh, when um, you were young, I had mine removed when I was five years old, and the lingual tonsils, which are found at the base of the tongue. So if you stick your tongue all the way out and you were to go down the sort of the back side near your throat, that's where the lingual tonsils are found. And we're seeing an increase in cancers involving those tonsillar sites. And those cancers, the biggest risk factor is a type of a virus known as the human papilloma virus, specifically human papilloma virus 16, which is known as an oncogenic um, virus, and that means a virus that has the propensity to cause a cancer. Now, what's unusual about this is that as a, an oral health care provider, a dentist, hygienist, assistant, um, it's very difficult to see a precancerous change and we tend to see this cancer after it has already spread into the regional lymph nodes. These are the lymphatic drainage into your neck, um, and so patients tend to present with a lump in the neck, uh, which has just come on over a period of a couple of months. And so in those situations, the first step is to have the diagnosis of the, the lump in the neck, and quite often we can go back into the mouth and look at the oropharynx and we don't find anything. That's because these cancers tend to be very small and they metastasize or spread into the lymph nodes very early on in the disease. 
So those are the two distinct forms of uh, oral squamous cell carcinomas. The human papillomavirus, um, the oncogenic strains of the human papillomavirus are probably transmitted um, through contact with people who have those strains in their saliva. And um, so sexual contact probably is the main um, mode of transmission of the human papillomavirus. And in the studies that have looked at the risk factors for um, HPV-associated oropharyngeal cancer, we find that those patients had a much higher number of sexual partners, not only conventional intercourse, vaginal or anal intercourse, but also oral sex contacts. Um, so this is something that, um, of course, affects all strata of the population. And unlike the other form of oral squamous cell carcinoma that is linked to heavy tobacco, alcohol, poor diet, low socioeconomic status, the oropharyngeal cancers are occurring in a higher socioeconomic status um, of patient. So as a dentist who, um, because in this country most people who come to the dentist are those who have insurance and they can afford dental treatment, you're, t you're possibly going to see more of these oropharyngeal cancers in the dental practice. Now, what can a dentist do? Um, what role can the dentist play in the fight against oral cancer? And the first thing that a dentist can do is they can examine their patients and do a careful soft tissue examination. And part of what a dentist does is check the teeth, check the gums, but they should also be checking the soft tissue structures of the mouth. And so when you go to the dentist, um, if you're not getting a soft tissue exam, the dentist or the hygienist is not pulling out your tongue and looking at one side of the tongue and then the other and looking underneath your tongue and looking in the back of your mouth and visualizing and actually palpating with their finger to detect any changes in your mouth that are abnormal, then that's something that you should ask for. Uh, and at, here at NYU, we train all of our dental students to be able to do a careful and comprehensive soft tissue examination. It only adds, you know, uh, less than a minute to the overall examination, and um, it's totally painless, and it's something that should be part of the standard of care of what dentists do. We call that an opportunistic screening. So whenever a patient comes in as a new patient or as an emergency or for your recall cleaning and examination, this should be part of what they do. Uh, and so this is very important. Now, what happens if a dentist performs an exam like this and they find something that is abnormal? First of all, what would raise suspicion uh, what sorts of changes in the mouth would make a dentist say, hey, this, this isn't right? Well, the, um, the diseases that can cause um, epithelial changes or changes to the lining of the inside of the mouth that could be potentially malignant or pre-malignant are things like white patches in the mouth that don't wipe off, uh, red patches, or mixed red and white patches, sometimes ulceration, or these are sores in the mouth where the lining mucosa has been lost. Now there are lots of reasons why people can get white changes or red changes or even sores in their mouth that have nothing to do with oral cancer or precancer. But a dentist should be able to look at those uh, and pick up certain signs and if they're not sure then the patient should be referred to an expert for evaluation. And a place like you know, the NYU Oral Cancer Center, this is what we do. We receive a lot of referrals from dentists, from physicians, uh, of patients who have lesions or oral changes that the dentist couldn't work out. And the patient comes here and we examine them and sometimes we'll do some tests and maybe even a biopsy, which we then, you know, will have a diagnosis and treat the patient if needed. And 
we offer the full range of treatment if it's a precancerous lesion or if it's a malignancy. Part of what I do outside of the Oral Cancer Center is um, I'm responsible for the um, undergraduate curriculum in the dental school for oral cancer and precancer. And my students uh, get together every year and they help to organize a very special event. And this is actually going to be the eighth year in 2013, and it's the Oral Cancer Walk New York City. Um, or New York City Oral Cancer Walk and it is going to be on April the 21st which is a Sunday and we've been moving it around different boroughs this year we're going to be doing it at Queens uh, at Casino Park and we're going to be walking in Casino Park and then through Flushing up to the City Field where the Mets play um, if you're interested in being part of the the walk we'd love to have you uh, you can actually go to the website, um, it's uh, www.oralcancerwalknyc.org and uh, if you click on the link there, it will go to a website where you can register online and join a team and uh, be part of the, uh, the cause. All of the money goes towards the Oral Cancer Foundation which is an amazing um, uh, organization that is dedicated to helping patients with oral cancer. So I've covered a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, territory and many of you will have you know, additional questions and feel free to, uh, to jot your questions down uh, and submit them to the forum at rankmydentist.com or click the link right below this video. Every April is Oral Cancer Awareness Month. Um, it would be wonderful to, as a patient, to challenge your, uh, your dentist to be aware or more aware than they possibly are about oral cancer and ask them for an oral cancer screening.